Before we dig deeper on the theorems about circles, let's have a quick review on some basic parts and definitions about circles. By definition, a circle is a figure consisting of all points which are a given distance from a fixed point called the center. So to create a circle, most of the time, we start with a point. Actually, all the time, we start with a point. Let's have a name. Let's call this point A. And then we have a certain distance. Say, for example, um, four units away from this fixed point. And then what we're going to do is we're going to trace all those points. We're going to locate all those points that are four units away from this particular point, point A. And that's four units. And what we're going to do is we're going to trace all those points that are four units away from this point. So, gawin natin, pagalawin natin to. Yan. And these are, this is basically your circle. The collection of those points is basically your circle. Now, the distance between the center and any point on the circle is called the radius of the circle. So in this case, the radius is 4. Let's create the circle. Kasi pag ginalaw ko to, mawawala na yung mga traces. Yan. So if, for example, if we locate another point here, and then we create a segment, the segment is also 4 units. But the term radius also denotes any line segment from the center to any point of the circle. So, ibig sabihin, dalawa yung parang meaning ng radius. Isang distance at isang line segment. So, let's have a name for these two points over here. So, in this case, AB, line segment AB is a radius as well as line segment AC is also a radius. Note that all radius or all radii of a circle are equal. Kapag inikot-ikot ko to, Lahat yan, 4. So, say for example, if you locate another point here, and then let's create another radius there, this distance is 4 units. A chord, on the other hand, is a line segment joining two points on a circle. So, say for example, if you have a point here and another point here, if you connect them, that is a chord. So, if you give this a name, so we have line segment EF is a chord of the circle. Line segment EF is a chord of the circle. By the way, we name a circle by its center. So, we call this circle A. There are infinitely many chords, but there's a special chord, a particular chord, if the chord passes through the center. By the way, that's the longest chord you could, you could ever have on a given circle. The longest segment is what we call the diameter. And the diameter is actually twice the length of the radius. Mm, hindi ako sure kung tumama talaga to, but let's create a diameter. Create a ray first, and then let's locate the intersection of that particular ray on the circle. Tanggalin lang natin to. Let's create another line segment. There you go. And in this case, yeah, this one. Let's tanggalin muna natin to, ha? This line segment over here, let's give this a name. So line segment GJ, which is a chord, but the chord passes through the center, is called the diameter. And the distance of this diameter is twice the radius. As you can see, it's the distance is actually 8. And for this first part of uh, our study about the theorems related to circles, gawin natin, let's first have uh, four theorems about chords and diameters. Let's have the first theorem. A diameter perpendicular to a chord bisects the chord. For most of the theorems, we're going to show it using GeoGebra. I know that doing a proof using GeoGebra does not count legally as a formal proof, but um, the features of the GeoGebra is actually more than enough to show most of the proofs. And let's believe GeoGebra is honest enough for us. Uh, let's let's just trust and believe GeoGebra. And But for some of the theorems, we'll be going to show the formal proof. And for this one, let's begin showing this using GeoGebra. Again, a diameter perpendicular to a chord bisects the chord. Let's begin with drawing a circle. A diameter perpendicular to a chord bisects the chord. Let's have a chord first. And then, we have a tool here that we can create a perpendicular line perpendicular to this chord passing through the center because we want a diameter. So let's create. Let's click this one and it should pass through the center. And this line contains our diameter. Now, let's see whether it cuts the chord into two. So let's locate the midpoint and let's locate the midpoint. Yeah, that's, I, I think, I know that that's not the midpoint. Let's have the intersection. Yeah, that's the intersection. And let's see how long is this one. That's CE, that's 3.21. 3.21. And let's have the other side. It's also 3.31. Tingnan natin kung papasa sa drug test and kung kahit baguhin natin yung itsura, location ng mga, ng mga chords, ng points, ng endpoints ng mga chords. At let's see kung mamimaintain niya yung feature na nahati. La, pakita muna natin na, ano, na this is actually 90 degrees. Yeah, that's 90 degrees. It, it verifies that the, this diameter, this line containing the diameter is perpendicular to this chord. And let's see kung mamimaintain niya. 3.66, 3.66, ganun pa rin. Pala, paliitin natin yung circle kung ganun pa rin. Let's 
put this on the other side. Palitin natin. Yeah. So again, a diameter that is perpendicular to a chord bisects the chord. Now, let's have the proof. Given that EF is perpendicular to CD, where's EF? This is EF. That's uh, the diameter is perpendicular to line segment ED, which CD, which is a chord. And then we're going to show that GC is equal to GD. Okay. Now, isipin muna natin yung atake natin for this proof. Ang gagawin natin dito, if you'll notice, if we connect CA and AD, we will form two triangles that are congruent by a theorem that's related to right triangles. And then we, j we just have to show that those two, that two triangles are congruent and then by the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are equal. We can say that this side GC is equal to GC, to GD, I mean. So let's have the formal proof. We first have to draw AC and AD. And then the first statement is, hindi ko na nilagay yung, ano, yung given. Okay. AC is equal to AD because those two are radii of the same circle, so therefore they are equal. The second statement is that AG is equal to AG by reflexive property. Same segment is equal to itself. Now, remember, these two are right triangles because, yeah, because this is perpendicular. So these two triangles are right triangles and we can use the theorems related to right triangles. In this case, we have hypotenuse and the leg. Remember the hypotenuse leg theorem and therefore, triangle CAG is congruent to triangle DAG by the hypotenuse leg theorem and since they are already congruent, we can apply the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are equal. So therefore, GC is equal to GC. So that's how we show theorem number one. Now, let's apply theorem number one. So given this circle with the diameter, with the diameter in a chord, CD, all you have to do is to look for CD. How long is CD? Now, okay. Yung libro kung saan nakuha ko yung lahat ng mga examples and lectures for this, for our geometry part, I put that on the description box. You can check the book. It's a free ebook. And uh, it's actually wonderful. It's straightforward and wonderful ebook. Let's find CD on this one. Let's apply the theorem. According to the theorem, remember, the diameter is actually perpendicular to the chord. Okay, it forms 90 degrees with the chord. Ah, the diameter forms 90 degrees with the chord. So, para makuha natin to, let's draw C... <laughs> let's draw this line over here. Line segment. Passing through the center. And... This is actually a radius. Tama, this is a radius. C, let's let's give this a name. Let's say let's say this is B. C, B is a radius. How long is C, B? We have some values here. This is 7 units and this is 18 units. So therefore, this is, al this is also a radius. And 7 plus 18 is actually 25. So therefore, this is also 25 units. And this is a right triangle. Therefore, we can find this particular length here. This length over here. Using the Pythagorean theorem. So by the Pythagorean theorem, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. We know that the square of the hypotenuse, which is 25, 25 squared is equal to the square of the basis, the sum of the squares of the legs. So we get x squared plus 7 squared. Actually, I consider this triangle over here. And 25 squared is 625 equals x squared plus 49. And let's solve for x squared. x squared is equal to 625 minus 49 and 625 minus 49 is 576 let's see kung may square root ito x is equal to a plus and a minus 24 but of course since this is a length dun lang tayo sa plus 24 so this is 24 units it's 24 units eh kalahati lang yun ng cd since kalahati lang ng cd yun we have to multiply that by 2 so therefore cd is twice of 24 and that is 48 Units. Let's have another one. Let's have this one. Let's find AB. We'll be uh, actually applying the same principle that we did earlier. All we have to do is to create this particular line over here. Connect this. OB. That's actually a radius and it's equivalent to 10 because this one is 10 units. And it's actually a radius and this is also 10 units. And we're going to apply the Pythagorean theorem to look for EB. EB muna. Tapos saka natin kuhanin si EA. Actually, paras lang naman yan. Si EB tsaka si EA. Let's solve for EB. Again, by the Pythagorean theorem. Again, by the Pythagorean theorem. This PT is Pythagorean theorem. We have... Um, OB squared, that's is 10. Square of the hypotenuse is equal to the square of the bases or square of the legs. We have 5 squared plus EB. Let's use EB. So, yes, okay. EB squared. So, this is 100 equals 25 plus EB squared. So, therefore, EB squared is equal to 100 
minus 25 and this is 75 so get let's get the square root of both sides therefore eb is equal to plus or minus 75 can be written as 25 times 3 meaning square root of 25 that's 5 so we have 5 root of 3 but since this is a length we're just going to use the positive one so therefore eb is 5 root of 3 since equal lang siya dun sa kabila this is also 5 root of 3 therefore ab is equal to 10 root of 3 units